My sources tell me that since September 2016, we have put together 10, 10 things to toss video. That was our first one. And since then, we've released 10 of them. So in this video, because we don't have time for 100, we're living in strange times here, guys. And I thought what I would do is I'd find 59. Yeah, 59. 59 things that you can toss right now because I know you're home, I know decluttering is probably on your mind and you might need a bit of a kickstart. So check these out and start decluttering. Do you notice that whenever you order takeout, they give you a takeout menu? It's like, I know about the pizza. I don't need a takeout menu, but there it is. And then you stick it in a drawer. I might need that for later. And then you get a coupon in the mail for a dollar off a hamburger. So what ends up happening is you get a big old pile of flyers and takeout menus. You think one day I'm gonna use that. Well, again, guys, let me remind you, internet, you can find all of that stuff online. And there are lots of apps that will share with you the latest and greatest coupons. But let's say you get one that you really want to use, just clip it out and stick it in your wallet and get rid of all the rest of the paper. One thing that you can do if you're getting a lot of junk mail is you can request for your mail carrier not to put any junk mail in your box anymore and that will save a lot of this. We had furniture and decor that made sense in our old home. Decor being anything from a planter to a vase, something on the wall, or a little decor item like a statue or not a statue, those little chachkas that you get at a home store, you know, and you put them in your house and it makes it look nicer. We had a lot of that stuff that we thought made our old house look really nice, but then when we were moving into this space and we were settling on the theme and the decor and what we wanted this house to feel like, a lot of that stuff didn't make the cut. It just didn't make sense anymore. And we thought, well, we could keep it and just use it in the guest room or put it here or put it there or box it up and save it for later. It felt like it didn't make sense. Frankly, I just didn't want to store it because what was I going to do with it? You know, go down in three years and decide I want this vase from a hundred years ago? No, I know that math doesn't make sense, but you guys, you guys get me. The things that we did decide to keep were items that we felt transitioned really well from one space to the other. For example, that famous yellow pineapple behind me. And the funny thing is so many of you have asked me about that pineapple. It was just a random thing that I picked up at uh, HomeSense, which is kind of like the Canadian version of home goods. Anyway, the pineapple made the cut, but there was quite a bit of furniture and decor item that did not. So we are donating a lot of that stuff because we don't have time to sell it. However, if you do have the time, there are buy and sell groups, there are local Facebook groups where you can post a lot of these higher value items and sell them or get rid of them. But the way we're doing it, we're just donating it and we feel like let it beautify someone else's space instead. There was a time in my life and that time was 2010 where I really enjoyed doing crafts and Chad and I would often hit up Michael's and like pick up fun craft supplies and you know do some creative things like scrapbooking and DIY cards but that time in our life has passed. Now some people are still craft obsessed and that's great. Um, I, I actually thought it was a lot of fun. It's just not part of my daily thing anymore. So we got rid of a lot of those crafts, either from consuming them or just giving away some of our less favorite items, but we did keep some choice crafting items just in case the craft bug ever bit again. However, it has been nine years. That bug is nowhere. It is time to move on from these crafting supplies. If you're somebody who has a bunch of crafting supplies and you had a scrapbooking thing, but you just don't have that thing anymore and you haven't gotten around to it in a while, there's a good chance you're probably busying yourself with other things these days. People who love crafting supplies, daycares, of course, if it's age appropriate, or teachers. Those are two individuals or groups that have to spend money on supplies all the time. And anything that you're not using, they will find a great use for. Riley's daycare loves craft supplies. So if it's not age appropriate for them, I'm gonna give it to my two best friends who are both teachers and they will definitely find a use for it. This is Chad's box of socks. Now he has a box, I have a drawer. But in either iteration, there are definitely socks that don't belong. Either they didn't get picked up at the singles dance, that's kind of my funny way of saying they're single, or they have holes in them and they're kind of not useful anymore. So what you need to do is sort through your socks, even the ones that you have bunched up, because I know we're all in denial sometimes, we bunch up socks with holes in them and we think, oh, I can get another use out of them, but really like socks with holes in them, they're not fun to wear, so we need to get rid of them. So sort through all your socks. 
unbunch them, rebunch them, look through all the singles, and anything that has holes in it or it doesn't have a partner, it needs to go in a separate pile. Now, for the socks with holes in them that are really bad, those ones you can actually get rid of. For the ones with small holes in them or fading at the bottom, there are definite second uses for it, and same goes for the single socks. And in fact, we are so passionate about this very topic that I put a video together not too long ago about different things that you can do with single socks. So I'll link that for you down below. When you're ready to cook something, you want access to your small appliances that you actually use, like my spiralizer, which I use all the time. And I don't wanna to have to dig through things that I never touch, like a pasta baker or a small little blender like this magic bullet here. If you go through your kitchen and you find that you have these small appliances that you haven't used in a year, because let's be honest, some things you're only gonna use once a year, it's time to move on from it. There's no need to keep it. You're probably not gonna find a use for it anytime soon, and someone else will probably benefit from it more than you would. I'm sure this will resonate with you. If you go around your house and take a look, you'll probably find shoe boxes or electronics boxes or old jewelry boxes. I don't know, but stuff that you've bought probably came in a box. You might have thought it was a good idea to keep the box. Now, if you're using the box to actually store something in it, perfect, keep it. But if you're not, if you think you might use it in the future, you probably are not going to, so just get rid of it. There's always that kind, thoughtful, well-meaning, generous person who gets you a gift set filled with bathroom swag that you're never going to use. Whether it's bath products and you don't take baths, or if it's fancy, funky shaving products, this is a man's thing, by the way, not pour moi, but if you get something like this and you're never gonna use it, just don't keep it. Give it to someone who you know will enjoy it. There's no shame in regifting. And by the way, for people who actually enjoy taking baths, bath stuff is awesome for them. But for someone who takes a shower, it's like, what am I doing with this? So do yourself a favor, go through, get rid of all those weird bath products that you don't use or any gifts that you just kind of feel bad about. Now's the time where you can say farewell. Now these are one of the worst offenders when it comes to clutter buildup in your storage spaces at home. This suitcase right here, I have had probably at this point for three years and it still works very well. However, as soon as it stops serving its purpose, I'm going to move on from it. You know why? Because I have kept so many pieces of luggage that I no longer need that I think it's pretty good. I might need it. The truth is you have your favorite stuff that you travel with and everything else that you don't travel with just sits there and collects dust. And because it's not in your home, in your active living spaces and part of your everyday life, it's very easy to just ignore them and leave them, but they build up and they can become overwhelming and frankly, ridiculous. You know, you might get a set of luggage and you find you only use one piece of that set. And if it's in great condition, perhaps you can offer it up to a friend or family member who does need some good quality new luggage. But if your luggage isn't in great shape, I would say at that point you can donate it or you can find a way to safely dispose of it because frankly, it's doing you no good and it is taking up valuable re retail valuable retail space in your home. I certainly never collected them, but Chad is an avid adult toy collector. These adult toys. This one is from 2003. This one is from 2001. We've got Arnold here before his political career ever kicked off. And we've got Trinity, who definitely looks a lot better. She's seen better days than this. If you know somebody or you are that somebody or your partner is that somebody who collects said adult toys thinking that one day they're gonna be able to sell all of them and retire onto their own private island, I hate to be the one to burst that bubble, but I look at this dusty, discolored, curled up box of Terminator 2 Judgment Day Arnold and I think, this doesn't have a lot of value to it. Now, if this is your primary business, selling these toys, or you are like the biggest comic fan, this stuff might really appeal to you, but for the average everyday Chad or Jim or Bob or Susan or someone who's just collecting these, they're likely sitting in your basement collecting dust, not money. So if you have boxes of this at home, 
and you're like, maybe one day I'll sell them, maybe I won't, I can assure you either way they're not bringing you joy or pleasure right now, they probably don't belong in your home. So you can go online and you can sell them. I know a lot of people sell this stuff on eBay. If there's a local comic shop, they might be interested in taking these off your hands. Or if there are ever any comic conventions in your area, there might be an opportunity where you can take these and sell them to other people who are very interested in this particular type of paraphernalia. Otherwise, this is just gonna sit in your basement and give you false hope that maybe one day you'll retire a really rich person where in reality, I don't know who'd pay more for a dollar than this, but then again, this isn't my jam. Several years ago in Toronto, they started charging for plastic shopping bags, and that meant every company, literally every company, started making their own reusable bag. And at first, that was great, because you're like, awesome, I get to save five cents. But then, your house started filling up with all of these guys, and you know what? After a while, it becomes difficult to store them. The truth is, those bags are designed for you to bring with you when shopping, whether for groceries or clothing, take home with you and reuse. So if you're collecting all of those bags, you're not doing yourself any favors. Keep about 12 bags on hand and get rid of everything else. A few weeks back, we did film a video about how I clean and organize my makeup area here in my office. And if you haven't done this already, I highly recommend decluttering some of the old makeup and hair products that you have in your home. Because you know, like this mascara, for example, it is definitely more than three months old. And if you know anything about mascara, you shouldn't have it around. So go through your makeup, pick out all the stuff that's old. If you need more details, we'll put the links to that video for you down below. And that will definitely free up some space in your home. I recommend cleaning out your closet twice a year. Once when the fall winter hits and once when the spring summer hits. When you do those change outs, you're gonna look through all of the clothes from the past season and you'll see the stuff that you haven't worn or that you don't really like anymore and you can sort of put that in a pile and move away from it. Doing this closet clean out twice a year is super helpful and it helps you get rid of that stuff. But if you haven't done that in a while, it might be a really good time for you to take a long, hard look at the clothes you have in your closet, decide anything that you haven't worn in the last 12 months, get rid of that, put it in a donation pile, and move on from it. I recently did that in my closet. I was doing my biannual closet changeover, but I was also getting rid of stuff that wasn't gonna fit me anymore, not at least while I was pregnant, and I put that in a box, and it freed up so much space in my closet. So now when I go in there to get dressed, I can actually just pick from things that fit me well and that I like, and that is the best part about getting dressed in the morning. While you're in your closet, you can have a look and see if you have any old, broken, mismatched, or wire hangers that aren't serving a purpose for you anymore. A few years back when Chad and I did our initial closet cleaning video, we got rid of all of the mismatched hangers and we moved on to wood hangers. Now every now and then we do find a plastic hanger or a mismatched hanger circulating through and we'll just prune it out. However, once we did that, we noticed our closet just looks so much nicer and more uniformed. And if you are somebody who gets your stuff dry cleaned, you probably have a lot of those wire hangers. And yes, it's a free hanger, but it's so annoying to actually work with. I find clothes slip off of them all the time. And those aren't meant to be actual hangers in your closet. That's a temporary solution for something that needs to be hung up so it doesn't get wrinkled. Before Chad started working with me at Clean My Space, he actually had a job. And every year they had this golf tournament and he would bring me back something from the golf tournament every year because he's so nice and thoughtful. He made me say that, just wanted me to clarify that for you guys. And he would always bring me back a Williams Sonoma cookbook. This was a thing that he got every single year. And he was very thoughtful, the recipes looked great, but you know what? I'm never gonna make them. They're very complex, they take a lot of time, and it's just not my style of cooking. And look at the size of these books, they're huge. I think we have about five of them. So cookbooks take up a lot of space, and while you might feel that the recipes look amazing and they're aspirational, and one day if you have time on a Sunday, you'll cook something, if you haven't used it yet, you're probably not going to use it. So find the cookbooks that you don't use, save some space, and get rid of them. Now here's something I think a lot of us ladies can admit to. We probably have jewelry 
that we don't wear anymore, whether it's broken and tangled like this bracelet that used to have a crystal in it that fell out and then got tangled, to this thing that just decolored, decolored, you guys know what I mean, discolored over the years that I kind of just stopped wearing but held on to because I paid $40 for it. And then this thing, which I think in theory is nice, but I never actually pick it when I'm getting dressed. So. We all kind of have this jewelry that lies around and takes up space, but that we never actually use. And the truth is, I know that there are lots of people in my life who would be interested in something like this. Now, something like this that's discolored, perhaps it could be cleaned and some new life could be breathed into it. And for the broken thing, frankly, I think I should just look to get some money for it. There are lots of different things you can do with jewelry if you don't want it anymore. You can find someone else who might really love it. You can donate it to a secondhand shop or if if it's something that's precious or semi-precious, you can take it to a jeweler and see what kind of cash you can get for it. Either way, get rid of the jewelry you don't wear anymore and clear up space. This was a wedding gift. Every time I get flowers, if they fit this, whether or not I am in love with the design, it's a functional vase, so it sticks around. But it's actually heavy, so I'm not gonna hold it anymore. When I get sent flowers, other times they'll come in various size vases. And well, at the beginning, it is so exciting to get beautiful new flowers and check out the new vase. That vase eventually just becomes part of the clutter party in this house. What you can do if you're willing to part ways with some of these smaller and larger vases, you can bring them to your office and use them for pen holders. Because let's be honest, it's a step up from the ugly plastic ones that we get at the office supply stores. Or if you have an upcoming occasion where you need vases, say you're doing like a DIY wedding or birthday party, great. Or if you need to give gifts to a friend and you want to use a vase to put some flowers together, fine. Otherwise, please do yourself and me and the world a favor and just move on from the vases, donate them and be done with them. Next stop is the medicine cabinet. You know, you buy something because you have a cold or a headache and then thank God it goes away and you don't have to use that stuff again. And then the next thing you know, you find the bottle when you need it the most and that product is expired. So go through your medicine cabinet, look at all the expiration dates and anything that is expired, put into a zipper lock bag and take it to your pharmacy. They have safe ways to dispose of it. Dumping it down the toilet or throwing it in the garbage is not the right thing to do. But regardless, you still have to go through that medicine cabinet and get rid of anything that's expired. Packing and unpacking a linen closet was an overwhelming task, although I have to say the linens that we had specifically were perfectly reasonable for our room, a guest room, and Riley's room. The area where we were challenged though were towels and cloths. Yes, we have a lot of towels and a lot of cloths. Now, there were towels that we had that were kind of those old beater towels and we thought, you know what? The time has come, we're moving into a new house. We have the towels we love, the ones that we always go to use whenever we take a shower. So you know what? Why do we have the other ones kicking around? Purses have a reason and a season. And if we go by that logic, you should have a maximum of four purses. Hear me out on this one. You can obviously have one for every season or you can have a small clutch, a large work bag, a super cute fashionable bag, and then your everyday bag. But either way you slice and dice it, there are four purses that you need. For example, I have a purse like this, which I think is adorable. I just don't wear it anymore. I have other purses to take care of my everyday needs. So this purse, as much as I love it, I am going to give away and I know someone who's gonna absolutely love it. So if you have a bunch of purses sitting at home that you haven't quite used in a while and you're probably not going to use in the near future, you can safely part ways with them. And purses actually do retain their value, so if you're interested, you can sell them online as well. When you go to college or university, one of the cool things is that you have to get your own textbooks. And this is exciting for about 45 seconds because you realize A, they're heavy, and B, I gotta pay for them and they're not cheap. So you kind of feel this responsibility to hang on to the textbooks even after you graduate. And I've gotten rid of the majority of mine, but I do have these three. Um, I kept this one because I thought I was actually ever going to reference it. 
I don't think so. But the truth is, I have not looked at these. I graduated in 2005. I haven't looked at these in 11 years. I don't need them anymore. If you have a post-secondary degree, you've learned what you've needed to learn, and now you're out in the workforce. You're probably never going to reference your textbooks again. And if you do need any information, you can always Google it. So do yourself a favor and pitch the old textbooks. When friends or family travel, they always kindly bring you back a souvenir. It might be a magnet or it might be a shot glass. And while you're really happy for them that they went on that trip and it sounded amazing, do you really need that shot glass? I don't know. For me personally, when I think about shot glasses, it reminds me of when I was 19 and going to nightclubs. When I'm at home, if I'm having a drink, I'm having it out of a nice rocks glass and I don't know, it just kind of saves space, let's be honest. I mean, these guys, they're cute if you actually have a dedicated collection, let's say in a bar or a man cave, but if you just need to find a place to stick them in the kitchen, they're probably not worth hanging around. So go find yourself those random shot glasses and give them a new home. We just did a move. We relocated our Clean My Space Service office HQ from one location to another. And with a move comes a ton of decluttering. And one of the things we really had to get rid of, a lot of electronics, both the peripherals like keyboards and monitors, and then the computer towers and the hard drives themselves. This was overwhelming because over the years, whether it's a business business, a home-based business, or even personal stuff, this really builds up. I mean, in our basement, I've definitely seen a box or two full of this and wires and some of these. So I know that both at work and at home, this clutter can really build up. What you can do to safely get rid of this, there are proper electronics recycling facilities. Again, you can look these up online and see where they are in the place that you live. But for something like a hard drive, and this is why I moved five computers from our old home office to three subsequent offices was because I didn't know how to safely get rid of them. But here's what I've learned. You can take your computer towers to a computer recycling facility and either you can remove the hard drives yourself or if you're someone like me, you just claim like, oh, I'm gonna clutch my pearls, I don't know how to do that. And they'll do that for you. And then they'll give these to you and you can take them home, get yourself a metal drill bit. And if you think about a hard drive, it's got like a CD inside. So what you wanna do is just drill a hole in one of the sides here, or I should say on one of the sides here, so that you effectively ruin the CD. The CD is not readable anymore, so your hard drive is garbage. Then you can recycle that just in your regular blue box, blue box, blue box, and you're done. Free samples and travel sized items. I have a basket of these in my bathroom and over the years I've created this rule. If I don't use it within six months, I get rid of it because otherwise it just builds up and this stuff either expires or just sits there and I tell myself I'm gonna use it, but I never actually do. So with free samples, as soon as you get them, use them or give them away to a friend, a family member, or you can donate them to a shelter. And the same thing goes for sample-sized or travel-sized items. You know, this toothpaste was used on a recent trip, but then these two are brand new. So I have a couple of options. Either I'm just gonna blow through these when I'm brushing my teeth and take this on my next trip, or the next time I go to the dentist, I'm gonna have yet another tube of toothpaste and then I'm gonna have a whole toothpaste collection and nobody needs that in their bathroom. So spend some time going through your bathroom, looking around and getting rid of anything that's sample sized or travel sized that you're not gonna be using within the next six months. And that reminds me, do you guys, when you go to a hotel, do you take little travel sized items with you and bring it back home? Let me know in the comments down below. We went on a candle shopping spree about a year and a half ago because who doesn't love scented candles? Well, we love them. But what ended up happening was the things that you like in the store, you smell them, they smell great, you light them up in your home, and then you realize, this smells a little too much for my liking. And then of course that candle sits there, you think maybe one day I'll light that candle, but that day never comes. If you have a candle that you don't like the smell of, but you really like the container of, like this marble one here, you can put your candle in the freezer, all the wax will become very easy to manipulate, you can pop it out, clean the candle holder and then repurpose it for something. But of course, don't do that unless you actually have a purpose for the candle holder. I'll tell you something that's getting tossed from our house today and that is Chad's enormous CD collection. It is 2016, 
To be honest, we don't even own a CD player in this house anymore, so I don't know why these things are still taking up a whole bunch of space in our basement. If you guys have CDs at home, the time has come. There are music streaming services online. We are members of a couple of them. We can listen to any music we want at any time, so basically having CDs is literally nothing more than taking up space in your home. These can be given away, sold, or recycled. Riley is almost nine months old. It's given us quite a bit of time to accumulate baby stuff. And we've been pretty ruthless about what we buy and what we accept from friends or gifts that we ask for. Ruthless, when I say that, I mean we've just asked for things that are useful, that we want, that we need, and that are sustainable. But some things have come our way that we haven't really been a fan of. Or, you know, when a baby is small and they need to test out different bottles, you have to buy one bottle and see if they like it, and if they don't like it, you have to buy another one. All this to say, there are certain baby things that we have acquired over time that we are not fans of and we do not plan to use with future kids. So what we've done is we've sorted through everything, we're setting it up for certain, you know, age-appropriate categories, and then anything that we don't like and we don't plan to use again, we are moving on from. When you open your drawer to grab a tea towel, which is what we call them in Canada, or a dish towel, you'll probably find some that are stained or have holes in them or just look beat up. And you don't need those ones anymore. So go through that drawer and pull out anything that's not looking so hot or fresh. And what we've done is replaced all of ours with our Maker's Cleaning Cloths, our Waffle Weave tea towels. They're so absorbent, they're so amazing, and they're actually our best-selling single-pack cloths. You can find more about this at makersclean.com. But aside from that, the idea here, guys, is to go through, get rid of all those old dish towels, only have the pretty and nice ones that actually work and serve their purpose. I've talked about getting rid of old containers before, but this is a next level conversation we need to have because let's say you've gotten rid of all your plastic containers like we have here. We've moved on to glass containers, but with that comes a whole other challenge because whenever you finish a jar of something, you always think, I could reuse that and that's happened to me and then I've lost the lid and it still sits there because maybe one day I'll find the lid. I'm not going to find that lid so this needs to go into the recycling bin. Now this was brought to us by Luke who works with us as our executive producer as a lot of you guys know. This is the lid to this container that this guy has had hanging around for I don't know 15 years. So today when he brought this, I said, Luke, we are going to recycle this once the video's over. So if you have anything that's sort of busted or smelly or not quite functioning anymore, it is time to part ways with it, especially when it comes to glass jars that are heavy and take up a lot of space. You bought them maybe because they were on sale or you really liked them, but they weren't quite your size or you accidentally purchased them. Or even if you have shoes that you wear, but you don't think you're gonna wear again or that frequently, or you kind of like them, but you never quite pick them to go with an outfit, it's probably a really good sign that it's time to get rid of those shoes. So take a good, honest look at the shoes that you have in your closet, whether they're new or worn, and ask yourself, would these be the shoes that I would pick if I were wearing a certain outfit? And if you would pick another pair of shoes instead of those ones, it's time to move on from those shoes. Board games, no matter what year it is and how much technology is in our lives, they just, they give you something. And when you're sitting with a group of friends and playing a board game, it can be a really fun experience. Chad and I, we have, we have a few board games to our name and when we hang out with certain groups of family member or friends, playing board games is a lot of fun and a great pastime for us. So we really enjoy it. That said, some board games are total duds and you spend 30 or 40 bucks on them, you give them a whirl, maybe you didn't have so much fun playing with them, and then you think, well, yeah, you know, but those friends were lame, like you kinda, whatever, whatever hits you. But you hang on to that board game, and then every time you go to your board game collection, you pass that one over. It's kinda like clothing, you know, you wear the shirt once, it's not a hit, you kinda don't wanna wear it again. It's the same with board games. So if you have a bunch of board games, look at them, be very objective and say, did people like that? Were we laughing? Would we pick that game again? If the answer is no, and there are like two or three that I can think of right off the bat in our board game collection, it's time to move on from them. And I'd actually love to know in the comments, what is your favorite board game? I have a few I will share with you. I love Balderdash. I don't think I've ever laughed as hard as uh, a few times when my family or Chad's family has played Balderdash. 
I love Scrabble. I actually played on the iPad all the time and Settlers of Catan. So I can't really pick between the three, but I'd love to know in the comments, which board game or board games do you absolutely love? When I was younger, in my late teens, my friends and I, no matter whose house we were at, when the parents were out, we would always go to the alcohol cupboard in the house just to explore, just to see what was there. It was innocent. I remember we would open that alcohol cupboard or the doors, wherever the alcohol was, and this stale smell would hit you because my friends, none of their parents were big drinkers, including my own. So they would have these like bottles that were legitimately collecting dust on them at varying levels of fullness. And you just knew that that alcohol had been there since their own honeymoon 30 years ago. Alcohol does not have an infinite shelf life. So if you're one of those people who doesn't go through your bottles fairly regularly, it would be a good idea to go to your bar and kind of just dump anything out that doesn't smell right or that's been sitting around for longer than a year. I don't know about you guys, but Chad and I are guilty of this. We kind of keep our old pillows just for emergency purposes. Like if we have a guest come over and they need to sleep over for the night, which by the way has never happened in the seven years we've lived in this house, but we still have these darn pillows. So here's the deal. I'm gonna do this and you can do it too. Take your pillows, drop them off at the closest pet shelter. They're pretty much the only place that's gonna take used pillows, but they actually really like them. And that will do you and your closet a service. And of course, the little tiny animals that get to sleep on the pillows will love you for it as well. Next up, head to your bathroom and check out your hair product collection. You probably have some stuff in there that you're not using anymore. I don't know what it was supposed to do, but regardless, it ain't doing it, because if it was, you'd be using it. That being said, check the expiration dates, or if you have any products that you're just not using anymore, now's the time to get rid of them. Just to be clear, this isn't my t-shirt drawer, but it's Chad's and we live together, so technically his t-shirt issue is my t-shirt issue. If you have a t-shirt drawer that's just teeming with t-shirts old and new, it's time to sort through them. Pick through each shirt, same principle applies. If you haven't worn it in the past six months, it's probably time to get rid of it. If it's a holy shirt, and I don't mean like a religious shirt, I mean a shirt with several holes in it, you can either chop it up and use it for cleaning purposes is great use for repurposing. Otherwise, if the t-shirt's good, but you're just not interested in it anymore, it's time to donate it. One t-shirt I don't want Chad to get rid of though is this one because Larry David. Our tastes can change over the years. Chad and I, when we first went to Montreal, probably back in 2008 or something like that, we bought this along with another print from an artist on the street. And if you've ever been to Montreal, this guy is pretty well known in the downtown Montreal area. Maybe you've seen his stuff before. These weren't expensive, but they meant a lot to us. And we really loved them. And we had them hanging up for a long time. Now I look at it and I'm over it. But the thing is, they're still in the basement because neither of us really feel okay with parting ways from them. The thing is, somebody else might actually look at that and say, that's beautiful, that would go so great in my hallway. But I'm not even giving that person a chance because we're not willing to move on from them. So if in your home you have prints, artwork, or even empty frames, oh my gosh, you know how people just have empty frames kicking around? This would be the time to look at that stuff and say, if I'm not using it now, and there's a really good chance I'm not gonna use it in the future, I need to either sell it on an online marketplace, take it to a, a secondhand shop, ask friends or family if they wanna pick it up. There are so many ways that you can eliminate this stuff, and if there is some value, or if it is a piece that you think retains some value, there are lots of places online, for example, eBay, where you can sell certain artists reclaim that money that you spend, perhaps a little more, perhaps a little less, and then give it to somebody who will really enjoy it instead of you keeping it locked up and collecting dust in some dank, dark basement. When we first moved into this home, the old homeowners had a cute little key rack and they labeled all of the keys. So not only did we have all the keys that we needed for all the different doors, they were labeled. Who even does that? These people were incredible. That said, we have changed a lot of the locks around the house, so those keys are no longer needed, but we still have them. 
Add that to a bunch of office moves, old offices that we no longer have access to, other pieces of locking furniture or boxes that we have that we no longer use, but we still have keys for them. Those keys, at least we all know, we know where they all are. They're all in one centralized location. The problem is there are a lot of things that we don't need keys for anymore. And we have these keys that don't work. And most people have the same problem. They just have this big old pile of keys. Some of them, they know what they're for. And most of them, they don't know what they're for. What Chad and I started to do is we picked up these key tags on Amazon and we're going to create like a little master key list with key tags so that we know what our keys are for. Every other key that we cannot find a current use for, we are putting that key in the recycling bin because as of right now, we have like a big container of keys and not a lot of locks for them. When Chad and I first started dating, this was back in 2006, this guy was a cigarette smoker. In fact, on our first date, he got up three times to have a smoke. Now, since then, he's quit cold turkey and I gotta hand it to him because I know that was not easy. But with all of the moves that we've done over the years and the fact that when you need a little lighter and you can't find it, you just go and you pick another one up, we've accumulated quite the lighter collection. In fact, I don't think Chad was even being earnest when he collected these eight for this video shoot right now. So one of the things to keep in mind when you have a lighter is to know that it contains lighter fluid. Lighter fluid is what gets ignited and creates a fire for you. But the problem is you can't throw lighter fluid in the garbage. So if you're going to get rid of your lighters, you have to make sure all the lighter fluid is used up first. So keep your lighters front and center, use up that fluid and then pitch them in the garbage. Obviously because it's flammable, it is not safe to throw them out prior to that. Now, if you want a more sustainable option, and I know you do, just pick up some wood matches. Now, this isn't so much a decluttering thing as it is just a friendly reminder to replace something thing, and that is your toothbrush. It should be replaced every three months. And guess what? Old grungy toothbrushes make perfect cleaning toothbrushes. So give it a really good rinse. You can soak it in vinegar for 30 minutes if you like. Give it a rinse, let it dry, and now voila, it's your cleaning toothbrush. And then you can grab yourself a brand new one and do it all over again three months from now. I think about everything that we do and everything that we let come into this house. And specifically, we've been thinking a lot about clutter and stuff over the past couple of years, especially because we seem to be getting more and more stuff sent to us all the time. And we've developed these informal rules about how to manage clutter and live a more minimal lifestyle. So in this video, I wanna share those habits or rules with you and show you how you can do the exact same in your home. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you're trying to live that more minimal decluttered lifestyle too. Before I get into those habits, I just wanna make a couple of things clear. This is what Chad and I have decided to do in our homes. Now, of course, there are lots of books out there about minimal living and decluttering, lots of videos and even TV shows that show you some different extremes, but certainly options if that's what appeals to you. Chad generously provided me with his used old loofah for this particular segment. And it's a great reminder because this thing looks like it has completely fallen apart over time. And frankly, I don't know where that's been. So if you go through your bathroom, you can get rid of any old loofahs, sponges, pumice stones, razor blades, or anything that looks old and dingy and needs a replacement. Look, I don't love throwing things out all the time, but for these consumable items, there is a time and a place to get new ones. So have a look. And if they're not looking so hot anymore, put on your shopping list that you need to get a replacement for them and ditch the old stuff. There was not a chance that I was gonna bring out some of my less beautiful underwear. So Chad graciously volunteered his. He's had these for a long time. I, I gotta say these are probably going on 10 years. Underwear is something that we can really build up. Actually, I don't wanna hold those anymore. Underwear is something that we can really build up over time because we're like, it's not that bad. Plus, who's seeing it? Maybe I need a bad pair of underwear. I don't know. I don't know what's going through your head about underwear, but I know the shtick that I have in my head about underwear. And I've certainly got different underwear for different situations. 
That said, I don't need like 50 or 60 pairs of them floating around. And at the end of the day, when I'm getting dressed, so I should say at the beginning of the day, when I'm getting dressed, I'm always picking out my favorite pair, the pair that I really wanna wear that's most comfortable and that feels best on my body that day. That to me is a great indication that it's time to sort through my underwear drawer and get rid of some of the older stuff that maybe doesn't fit or maybe has a pulled string or a hole or who knows what else. I'd love to know in the comments down below, what's your threshold for throwing out a pair of underwear? The nightstand junk drawer is a commonly found species in pretty much every bedroom in pretty much the entire world. We all have that one drawer where we put things that we think we're going to need directly beside our bed. But frankly, the majority of stuff that's in there, we don't need directly beside our bed. We go through ours a couple times a year because things just end up there. But you know what? The cleaner it is, the easier it is to find things. And when you don't have the mentality of a junk drawer, funny enough, junk doesn't actually end up in there. So I'd actually love to know in the comments, how many junk drawers do you guys have in your homes? Back when Chad used to have a job, I mean, you know, before he started working from home. I still cannot believe this, but this guy wore suits and ties every day, and this is the remnants of his tie collection. Now, over the years, I mean, when we first started dating, I had to do a lot of work in Chad's tie collection, but he actually has pretty good taste, so over the years, he's picked out some really nice ones. But Chad doesn't go to too many fancy occasions where he actually needs ties. So I think it's about time for him to go through his tie collection and pick out the ones that he knows he would never wear anymore. I mean, seriously? Business cards are like ants. They're small. You can find clumps of them around your house. And they seem innocuous, but you still want to get rid of them. I don't know what it is about business cards, but they really do just pile up. And we think that they're more important than they really are. When you think about a business card, it's just information about someone that you may want to stay in touch with. There are a few things that you can do. First of all, if you have a bunch of business cards, you can take photos of them. There are apps as well that exist for you to compile your business cards so you no longer need them. What I do when I find business cards is I look at them and I say, do I ever need to talk to this person again? If I do, I'll write their information down, likely in my phone, or I might take a picture of the card. If I don't, I just chuck it. If it's somebody who I thought I, I wanted to stay in touch with that person, I'll get their email address, I'll quickly write them an email even if it's on my phone. Hey, just wanted to stay in touch, ditch the card. I, I find business cards actually so wasteful. Now, whenever I'm in a social situation where I might be networking, I don't bring business cards anymore. I just say, let's exchange emails on our phone or let me follow you on Instagram and I'll follow you back. There are other ways that we can stay in touch in touch without business cards these days. Plus, in email footers, oftentimes people will have their signature with all of their information. And truthfully, if you need someone's mailing address or phone number, you can always just drop them a line. There are lots of ways to stay in touch today. Business cards, if you have them, pile them up, get the information that you need and ditch them. And then in the future, say no to the business card. After we packed everything up, we realized we had a lot of storage bins left behind. And this brought up some feelings for me because sometimes I'll watch videos and I see people who buy tons of storage bins to store little things and kind of solve problems that don't really exist or store things that don't really need storage. And the truth is, if you're constantly going through your clutter and you're getting rid of things, you don't need copious amounts of storage bins. And you know what, we were guilty of that too. So one of the things that we decided when we moved was to get rid of a lot of our storage bins, we donated them, and we decided we're just not gonna store things that we don't need, ergo reducing the amount of storage bins that we have. I love Chad, bless his heart, but honestly, we have a collection of cables that makes me sick. And he is sitting right over there and he is looking down at his iPad because he doesn't even want to make eye contact with me right now. And I feel like a lot of you guys are in the same situation. You see, we have cables like, <laughs> I don't even know what they're for. There's like R2-D2 cables and plug -ums and stick them cables. Like, I don't even know what these things are. They're all kinds of colors and I typically don't like to enforce things in this house, but I've really laid down the law with Chad in this cable collection because it 
it sort of angers me in case you haven't been able to pick up on that. So cables are something that we are working on. It is, it is a work in, pro, in progress, but we are working on decluttering that right now. There ain't no such thing as an R2-D2 cable. What about cheesy or promotional or useless magnets? Back in the 80s, my mom would collect magnets with like bakery phone numbers on them. We don't need that anymore because internet. So any promotional magnets that you have, get rid of them. Now, if there is a magnet that you actually use, like this one here is a conversion chart. I hang on to that one because it actually serves a purpose. But anything else, like if it's, you know, a bit of a chutchka that your friend brought you back from a trip, you probably don't need it and it's creating visual clutter on your fridge. What we do, we have these little magnets. They're tiny, they're streamlined, and they're super powerful. And we only put things on our fridge that we actually need. Ladies and men with ponytails, you probably get me on this one, hair ties. I think I have, I don't know, maybe 400 hair ties. Chad would contend it's closer to 5,000. But anyway, they do float around the house and I have them in various locations. Frankly, the best thing to do is to pick all of them as you go throughout the house, put them on your wrist, centralize them into one location and get rid of the ones that are broken or stretched out. Nothing is worse or more frustrating when you need a ponytail to have a stretched out crappy hair tie that's gonna snap on you. So do yourself a favor and get rid of the bad ones. One clunky thing you might have in your house are game consoles. I'm not talking new ones, I'm talking older versions that you're probably not using anymore. The good news about getting rid of this, twofold. First of all, it's gonna clear up a lot of space in whatever area you've been storing them. These things are bulky as well as their associated games. The next thing is that you can actually sell these. They tend to have a decent resale value. I'm not talking like go and get your girlfriend a diamond ring. I'm talking like a few extra bucks to put in your pocket. These things do definitely retain their value and have a secondhand market. When you're flipping through your phone, if you have to go through multiple screens to find the app you need, it's probably a good indication that you have too many apps on your phone. So here's what I suggest, go through each app. If you haven't used it in six months, delete it. And if you need it, you can always re-download it. That's happened to me a few times. And I actually find this exercise helpful because it helps me realize, yeah, I really don't play that game anymore or I never shop at that store. And it declutters your phone. And the truth is, just like there's actual physical clutter, there's digital clutter too. And if you can declutter your phone, you save memory, your phone works a lot faster, and it's a lot easier to find what you actually need. I've really come to appreciate uniformity in a kitchen. So looking at things like plates, bowls, glasses, and cutlery, I really like when everything is from the same set, not a random mishmash, a collection of things. And when you live in a space for years at a time, you get a glass here, you break a couple, you still have one left behind. And by the end of it, you you're left with a cupboard of most of the same glasses and then a few random ones. So I took any mismatched glassware, I wrapped it up and I put it in a donation box. And we decided that we're going to go and pick up these glasses which are from Ikea. I think a lot of people have them. They're super inexpensive so if they break, they're easy to replace and they look nice and uniform. Perhaps in my house more than most, we have a lot of cleaning tools and a lot of cleaning products for obvious reasons. We're testing them, we get sent things, we're often trying things out here at the house, and that means that we're building up quite a bit of these cleaning tools and we have duplicates kicking around. Now some of these have definitely seen better days, like I'm looking at a couple of these cleaning toothbrushes. That would not be suitable even for cleaning purposes at this point. And same with these scrub brushes, this one really has also seen better days. So what I recommend with all of your cleaning tools, whether you have them in a centralized location or if you have little satellite cleaning units around your house, is to corral everything together and have a good, honest look at it. Okay, I have a major phobia of anything going in my eye. In fact, when I go to the eye doctor, I have like a panic attack. It's such a scary place for me. So I cannot imagine wearing contact lenses, but Chad wears them 
And anytime he buys a new bottle of contact lens solution, he gets a new one of these. And despite my best efforts, I cannot think of too many additional uses for contact lens cases. So what I've advised him to do, and all of you guys who get these new things all the time, is to just ditch your old ones by recycling them and keeping only your most recent contact lens case with you. And if you guys have any great uses for them, let me know in the comments down below, because I am actually quite curious what you do with these things. Sometimes when you get a gift, you really get two, the gift itself and the gift bag. Now, a lot of us think, okay, gift bag, it's in perfectly good condition. I'm just gonna keep it for the next time I need to give a gift. Well, we've all been down that rabbit hole. We know where that goes. 10 years later, you have a big old pile of gift bags and nobody to give them to. So what I've started to do is talk to my teacher friends and say, hey, do you guys need gift bags for class? Before I can even finish my sentence, yes. So if you have a big pile of gift bags, donate them to your kid's school or to a teacher friend of yours. I'm sure they will love them for crafts or storage or anything in between. Teachers can be quite creative and they're on a budget. So something like this would actually go a long way. Now, if you know you have an upcoming need for some gifts, it's certainly okay to keep a couple of gift bags here or there. But if you start piling up gift bags, they're just gonna be hogging up space in your home for no good reason. I have the best of intentions when it comes to reading before bed, and that's why I have a few of my favorite magazines lying around as well as books on my night side table. Now, every now and then I'll come across a book or a magazine, pick it up and think, oh, I'm totally going to read that, and I never do. But it just sits there because one day, that infamous one day, I'll get to it. But it kind of never do. So I don't know if you guys go through the same thing, but if you do, the idea here is to move on from any of the books that you already have read, unless of course it's a reference book, and then you can put it in a bookshelf, and any magazines that you've gotten to already or you're definitely not going to get to, put those in a pile. There are so many people who will gladly accept donated magazines. I give mine to my sister-in-laws whenever we see them at family events because they don't have to go out and buy magazines. They can just use the ones I have subscriptions to. Or you can remove your address if you have a subscription and you can donate it to a doctor's office or somewhere with a waiting room that you know is always in need of good reading material. You can take them into work, give them to colleagues, whatever it is, the same goes for books. Or if you have books that you no longer use, you can donate them to a library. We don't order takeout that often, but when we do, we used to put all of the extra ketchup packets, little soy sauce packets, mustard, relish, sweet and sour sauce, pizza dipping sauce, chopsticks, plastic cutlery in this drawer. And when I told you guys I went through and cleaned out the kitchen, it all left. I got rid of all of it. You know why? I have soy sauce in the fridge. I got ketchup. I got dipping sauce. It's all there. So if I want it, I know where to find it. I don't need the packets. So if you are ordering takeout and you know that you don't want to have that stuff cluttering it up and you're bringing it home, perhaps just let them know, I don't need the cutlery. I don't need the little packets. You guys know that I like to cook, and because of that, I collect myself a few spices here and there. And sometimes I'll go a little bit on edge and I'll pick something up that I think I'm gonna use, but I never actually end up using. I mean, who needs 450 bay leaves? Not me. And this nutmeg, I think I bought a year ago. And I have every intention of using it because I love nutmeg, but seriously, it's probably expired. That's how old it is and nutmeg's not supposed to expire. So go through your spice drawer, pick out anything that is old, lost its flavor, doesn't really have that same pungent smell anymore. Typically you're supposed to keep spices for about six to 12 months and then get some new ones. Occasionally something will happen at home and you'll run out to the hardware store and pick up this one particular item to solve this one very specific problem. And then because you went through such headaches and heartaches to figure out that one solution, you will keep that product or tool tucked away in a very special hidden spot as it collects dust waiting for the next 20 years until you encounter that problem again. We have had this happen now a couple times in the house where we've gone out and we've made some anticipatory purchases, like we'll buy that varnish for when we finish the floor in that room to solve this particular problem, which the problem never happened, long story. But anyway, we went and we picked up this bottle of varnish 
and we're never going to use it. Like we're just, it's never going to happen, but it's sitting there. So when you think about your house and you come across products and tools that you bought for these like one-off weird, unique situations, you either use them or you decided never to use them, but they're still at home. Those are the things that you need to get rid of. So do a big sweep of the house, have a look around and find those things, those one-off things, or maybe even those like as seen on TV things that they sell to solve fake problems. Like, you know, problems that don't really exist in the world or in your house, but you bought the product anyway corral all of that stuff up, find a safe way to dispose it. So for example, that varnish, we have to take it to a, a safe disposal facility, but we're just, we're moving on. We don't need it anymore. Every family or every household should have a good quality filing cabinet that's organized and keeps your household papers available and intact so that if you ever get audited or you ever need to reference that paper, it is easily accessible. We live in a house where we not only have the two of us, we have a baby, we have two cats, a household, and three businesses. We have a lot of paper. In fact, we have one of those big old banker's filing cabinets. It's in our storage room. So before we moved, I actually went through, it was grueling, but I went through all of our paper. I got rid of it. I put it in a box and I took it to my local office supply store where they had a shredding service. You could just drop off the box. You watch them stick everything in a big old shredder and you pay, I think it was 20 bucks for a huge box. So it was very worth it. Belts kind of fall in and out of fashion, but unless you're wearing a belt on high rotation, you probably don't need it in the house. So here's what I recommend. Look at your belts, keep a black one, keep a brown one, keep a fashionable one and ditch the rest. We've decluttered a lot over the years from our kitchen, but two things we haven't that you love, that famous pineapple over there, which is from a store called HomeSense. We probably bought it about seven years ago. And then this, giant coffee cup, which is actually a planter because it has a drainage hole. And then of course this little plate, but we use it for fruit and sometimes bread or other random things that make it into there from the countertop. Anyway, I know this is a weird time that we're living through right now. And I know so many of us are striving to feel productive, but you know, I put this thing together for you so that you can pick and choose what you can do right now. Cause I know we all have varying degrees of what we can handle right now. We're busy, we've got a lot of other things going on, whether it's work or kids, but I know you want to emerge from this feeling a little bit accomplished. So if you can pick one or two things or 10 or 50, that's great. Just a quick reminder, anything that you declutter, normally I would tell you to immediately donate it, but at this point, you can't take it to a donation center or a donation box. They are not collecting or doing pickups. So just hang tight until this is all over and then do a nice big cathartic drive to a donation center. I hope you found that helpful. If you want to see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can follow along on Instagram. I'm at Melissa Maker. Chad is at the Chad Reynolds. The two of us are at Clean My Space. Here's another video that you might want to check out. I hope you enjoy it. If you want to learn more about Maker's Clean Microfiber Clots, and yes, we do have some sales going on, you can click this button right over here. There's a button down there that lets me know you care, so you can click it if you liked this video, and you can click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching. Stay sane and we'll see you next time.